that we've finished working on hitting, reviewing what we did with hitting, we built a routine, a consistent fashion of walking up into the batter's box, checking your body parts, making a good consistent swing every time. Remember the key to being a successful hitter is doing it the same way each and every time, being in control of your body so you can control the bat. Now we're going to start talking about throwing the baseball. One of the first things we want to talk about is gripping a baseball. For young players, it really doesn't matter how you grip the ball, whether you grip it with two fingers, three fingers, or four. The bottom line is being in control of the baseball. If you can control the baseball, if your athlete can control it in their hand, they can hold it with as many fingers as they need to to control it. Later on, they'll slowly work their way to two fingers, and that's where you want them to be. But to start with, don't, don't put too much emphasis on how we hold the baseball. What we're going to do is start with Jake with the baseball in his hand. So ball in your hand. Put the ball in your hand in your glove right now. Feet shoulder width apart. Nice balanced stance. Bending your knees. Taking a nice deep breath. Now the very first thing we're going to do with Jake is he's going to take his right foot and he's going to take a small step forward with his right foot. So go ahead and do that. And what we're doing there is we're gaining some ground toward our target. We're also setting our core up to start turning to throw the ball harder. And we're pretty starting to get some momentum in the throwing motion. The next motion is going to be, and hold on for a second, Jake, as Jake's left foot goes towards his target, he's going to break his hands out of his glove by brushing his thumbs against his chest. So what it's going to look like is this. We're going to come into a position where the ball, his glove, his head's in the middle, an equal but opposite position with both thumbs down. So go ahead and show what that looks like, Jake. So break it, brush, nice position right there. Now notice Jake's elbows are slightly bent. The ball, his head, and the glove are all in alignment with his target, creating a real nice line with his shoulders. Weight slightly back. Now if you go back into the hitting lessons that we just did, if you look at this position, this is very similar to a position that Jake was in when he was hitting. If we simply take his glove and move it over here and make it look like a hitting motion, notice we're in that same loaded position that we're in right before we hit swing the bat. So occasionally we're going to go back and review the hitting so you can see how important these body positions are. Go ahead and split your hands. So again, we're in this equal but opposite position. Next thing we're going to have Jake do is turn his glove up. And again, the glove acts like a steering wheel. It's a pointer. Typically where this glove starts off and finishes is where the ball's going to go. If we can keep the glove centered in his body when he releases the ball, the ball's going to follow, going to go right to the target. So as Jake goes to throw the ball, he's going to squish the bug, kind of like we do, driving that back knee down like in hitting. So go ahead and turn that back foot. Okay, then as the ball comes through, go ahead and go with your throwing motion, chest down, Head up, nice follow through, really good position. Go ahead and turn that back foot just a little bit more, Jake. Right in there, good position. And again, when we first start playing catch, when we first start throwing a baseball, want to leave your back foot on the, back, on the ground. This encourages your athlete to bend at the waist, follow through, get a nice flat back using all of their body when they throw. One of the things that I notice with a lot of ball players, if they show up, they just play catch in any fashion and suddenly the game happens and they're not ready to make a good consistent throw. So when my teams come out to the park, the first thing we do, start out off about 25, 30 feet away, focus on technique, focus on balance, focus on the proper way of throwing. As they start getting loose, they'll stretch it out a little bit, throw it a little longer distance. Then when they come back in closer, we will go to game speed catch. What I call game speed is that we're going to throw the ball the same, with the same technique, mechanics, and intensity that we use in a game. We're going to use our feet, we're going to gain ground, we're going to incorporate the catching and the throwing motion, all in a fashion that we can use in the game. So what we're going to start off with, we're going to have our guys Vinny and Jake play a little bit of catch. First time, they're going to focus on technique for the first couple throws. They're going to keep their back foot down, their glove up. They're going to bend at the waist, make good solid throws with a good finish, rounded shoulder when they finish. So go ahead guys and show what that looks like. So take your step, step, glove up, and throw. And again, Jake, same thing, right foot, left foot, glove, and throw. Good. One more time. Left foot, right foot, glove, and throw. Keeping your glove in the center of your body, making good solid throws. One more time, Jake. Right foot, left foot, glove, and throw. So now, before we go to the little more game speed catch, I wanted to make one more comment if I could. When we're watching these, these throwing techniques, if you look, this is not central to pitching. It's actually all positions. When a fielder fields the ball, it's right foot, left foot field, then it's right foot, left foot, throw. Whether I'm a shortstop, an outfielder, a catcher, or a first baseman, these moves that these guys are making right here are central and they're, with, they're universal to the game. If you can learn this style of playing catch, it even translates eventually into your pitching motion 
just like this. So if you focus on this technique, it'll allow you to play any position successfully. Let's go a little faster. Let's go to a little more game speed. Use your feet. Nice, short, accurate throws. Very nice. And go ahead, right back. So start incorporating into your catching motion. You step into the catch. Left foot, right foot, throw. You can see Vinny, right foot, left foot, throw. And we go back and forth like this. We want to work at this speed, a good, consistent speed, making short, sharp throws. Notice the throws are accurate, center of the body, to allow the, your teammate to catch the ball easily and deliver a nice, accurate throw to his teammate. Good job, guys. In order to let, learn how to become a consistent, accurate pitcher, you first have to learn how to throw the ball properly. So we've just gone over from both the left-hand side and the right-hand side how to play catch in a proper fashion, how to prepare yourself using your legs, getting your glove in the center of your body, and delivering an accurate throw in a playing catch style. We're now going to break into the first pitching drill. One of the things that I like to do is initially, even though legs are a very important part of pitching, just like hitting, we're going to eliminate the legs, put the pitcher on his knees, and work all upper body to start with. Learn how to turn, it, turn your torso, split your glove, and make a good solid throw, finishing with a rounded shoulder and your chest down to your knee. So I'm going to demonstrate with Vinny how this drill goes. A lot of coaches use this drill. I just don't think a lot of them pay the attention to detail like we want to in this specific drill. So how we're going to start, again, ball in hand. We're going to have his hand in the glove. His glove is centered in his body, head up looking at his teammate. First move is going to be a turn of the shoulders and a rotation of his torso. Go ahead and rotate, keeping your elbows nice and relaxed. Glove in the center of the body, continue to look at your target. Glove here, target there. Good. Notice we want to keep his front knee square to the target, back foot on a straight line to the target. First move that Vinny's going to make, he's going to split his hands out of his glove, brushing his chest and coming up in an equal but opposite position. Elbows slightly bent, nice and relaxed. Again, notice the glove is in the front, acting like a pointer or a steering wheel. This is going to really help determine where the ball is going to go. What we want to do next is we want to turn that glove up to the sky. And when he throws the ball, we're going to think about moving the chest to the glove and not the glove to the chest. A couple things happen when you do that. One, you gain ground to your target. And two, you gain momentum throwing the baseball with your whole body. So now as Vinny goes to throw, the glove is going to stay up. He's going to continue to rotate down. And his throwing hand is going to go down by his opposite foot, by his opposite ankle. Notice what we achieve. We get a real nice rounded shoulder, flat back. His head's up looking at the target. He's gained ground, good momentum, good solid throwing motion right there. Now before we start the drill with the players, I do want to make a quick comment. Is there's another drill out there that's real similar to this and accomplishes a lot of the same things, and that's a towel drill. And that can be done when you don't have a teammate, you don't have a partner, you're in a situation where you can't throw a baseball, maybe in your room, in a garage, in a carport. You simply do the exact same drill, the same technique, same movements, Put a short towel, 10, 12 inch towel in your hand, and as you go through this throwing motion, you snap that towel down in front of you. Accomplish the same thing as this drill, but allow you to do it without a partner. So what we're going to do is have these guys try this drill a little bit as a team, throwing the ball back and forth. So Vinny, go ahead, turn your shoulders, split your hands, glove up, and throw. And Jake, the same thing from the right side, turn, split, glove, and throw. What we want to do as coaches is we want to focus on the follow through. Go ahead, guys, keep doing it as I talk. We want to focus on their follow through, on getting a nice flat back. One of the things this drill is really good for, and I'm going to use Jake as an example down here when he gets the ball. Jake, I want you to stop with the ball right here. So turn, split your hands, turn your glove up, and stop just as you're there. What this drill is great for, for a lot of young players that have a problem throwing sidearm or too far over the top, this drill allows you as a coach or a parent to isolate a real natural arm slot. Take a look at where Jake's arm is. The ball's above his fingers. His fingers are above the wrist. His wrist is above his elbow. His elbow is above his shoulder. Real nice, safe throwing technique. Great for accurate throws. And it's a very natural technique. A lot of coaches focus on a real overhand throw. I don't feel that's as natural. This is a nice, natural position. What we want to achieve is a position where you can repeat the throwing motion over and over gaining success, throwing strikes, staying safe. Go ahead, Jake, and throw one. Go from the start, or there. Good, that's okay. One more time. Turn, split, glove, and throw. One of the things also, as a young coach, or as a coach coaching young players, I like to talk these guys through the drill, teaching them timing and tempo, counting out the steps of the drill, again, reinforcing that step at a time, building a good routine, teaching them how to throw properly. One more time, Jake. So we turn, split, 
glove, and throw. If you do that as a coach, you help walk them through the tempo and the timing, helps them achieve what we want, and that's consistent delivery, good accurate throws, good technique.